Hi, Dan Tokar here at the Willow Forge in Shepherdstown, West Virginia. And to continue the Blacksmith's Dictionary and tie in with uh, the problem solving uh, questions, uh, the question was asked about twisting. And uh, well, it's a big subject, but we'll do some of the basic things uh, and give you a start at least. All right, my favorite twisting wrench is this thing, an adjustable spanner, a monkey wrench. It has a handle that you can slide into a piece of pipe to get some extra leverage. I welded a handle onto the top and it'll adjust any range that I need. Some people use these things, which are more like forks. Um, they can be used as bending wrenches or you can stick them in the vise. And the other thing that works really well is large sized uh, tap wrenches. Uh, if you can get a tap wrench that's big enough to put a one inch square in there, they are adjustable to grab taps, that works marvelously. The other part of twisting things is what to twist. Uh, quite often people just assume that you're twisting square bar, but you can weld together combinations of stock. That is a pair of 3 8 inch round with a piece of quarter by 5 8 tack welded at both end as a test piece. There's a piece of half inch square with a piece of quarter by 3 quarters tack welded at both ends. piece of 5 8 inch square and a piece of 1 inch angle iron. A piece of half inch square and 3 8 inch round. And a piece of angle iron with a piece of um, quarter by three quarter and three eighths inch round. All right, <clears throat> I've got a piece of half inch square mild steel in the forge and I'm heating it up. I'm turning it in the fire, something you don't normally do with something like a half inch square so that you get an even heat on both sides. If you have one side that's hot, uh, it tends to twist more than the side that's cold and it's hard to control. Same thing with hot and cold spots along the length of the bar. Ideally, if you had it all at the same temperature, you'd get a nice even twist. There are machines that allow you to uh, twist things, quite big things, uh, at room temperature. Uh, but again, that's equipment that you're very unlikely to have or to build for yourself. I haven't bothered to build such a thing. It's also that uh, things that have such perfect twists are what they are. They are machine twisted and they don't really have much light to them. See, I am moving this back and forth in the fire. Try and make sure that I get a nice even heat. The other thing you can use to control it is I have a dipper full of water. I'll use if I have hot spots. I need to control the twist. If you have a part of the bar that's twisting more than the other parts, um, you can hit it with a, a mister, a spray bottle, uh, drip water on it, do something to cool it off a little bit. Take off the scale, stick a little bit of it in the vise, take my twisting wrench. And I'm going to go clockwise. It's one full twist. One and a half. Two. And you can see how 
how this part is even and this part being cooler has a slower twist. And because I have a wrench with an equal length handle, it's fairly easy to keep that centered. Now, if you want to straighten that, you can sometimes pull it around in the vise. Other times, you need a wooden mallet and a board on the anvil so that you don't smash the uh, nice ridges. And you see, I straightened that out fairly nicely. So, that's the simplest, most basic twist. And I should have intentionally messed up the heat so that you could see the use of the water. But well, the next part, I am sure I'll get it wrong and we'll need the water. It doesn't need to be the hottest. Of course, that always happens when people are watching. I'll turn it that way. Much better. All right. Let's try that again. Not quite so hot, but still. Put that there and twist. Drop your tool. And then you can move the, the, uh, the stock And you can see what we got here is a reverse twist. There are wrench marks though. This is the problem with using the wrench method. Every method has its uh, advantages and disadvantages. So, the next method is using water to make the reverse twist. You can stick these things in the vise and uh, incrementally twist them. That also works. Okay. Put that in there. And let's see. Might we want to do a twist like this. And then cool off. that section and reverse the twist and twist it a little more in the opposite direction but you can see how cooling off 
cooling off this section allowed me to reverse the twist and do that section. Let's see, we'll get this close enough so you can see it a little better. But that was the reverse twist done just using water to cool off the one section that you had already twisted and then reversing the twist. So there's no tool mark in that. All right. Next part. I start over. on the floor, always a good thing to do. And I'm going to change the shape of the bar and show you how that makes the twist look different. I'm going to forge down two of the corners on this half-inch square bar so that it only has two corners, one opposite each, each other. straight and I still have enough heat come back here And you see what you get just by flattening two corners. You get a much different twist. All right. What I'm going to do next is the piece of quarter by three quarters with the three eighths inch round at both. Okay, what I've got in the fire is a pair of three eighths inch round and a quarter by three quarters that have been welded together into a bundle. They're just tack welded, arc welded on the ends. Uh, bringing them up to heat slowly so that all three bars will have an even heat. And I'm moving it around to make sure that 
it's got about the same temperature all and up and down the length. All right. Bring this out. Brush it off a little bit. Stick it in the vise like that. That again <clears throat> is a twist of two three eighths inch rods and a quarter by three quarters as a bundle and twisted. All right, the next bundle is a half inch square rod and a three eighths inch round rod. Together. I always put them in the vise so as to help squeeze them together rather than having them open up. All right. Now this is a fairly asymmetric bundle because the half inch square has a lot more mass. All right. That loose. Anyway. Half inch square, three eighths inch round, twisted as a bundle. The next one is a piece of five eighths inch square and a piece of one inch angle iron. And I've been heating it up and turning it so that they heat up evenly because it's very easy for the, uh, the big bar to stay cold. All right. I'm going to put it in the vise like that. All right. Now you see what you get there is is that the angle iron uh, 
hides a lot of the center bar but that center bar keeps the angle iron from collapsing so you get this interesting layered effect all right next piece of angle iron that is the same one inch angle iron with a piece of quarter by three quarters and a piece of three eighths inch round all right what we've got is a piece of one inch angle iron a piece of three eighths inch round and a piece of quarter by three quarter pack welded into a bundle well, they're just at the ends, and I've been heating it up slowly to try and get all those bars up to the same temperature, because ideally you don't want to have one bar or the other be hotter. You want them to twist evenly. All right. A wooden animal. All right. You do get interesting ribbon effects with the uh, the angle iron, and you see the other two bars as a sort of shadow line inside the ribbon. Okay, now for something different. I've taken the filter off the camera because what we're going to do is a, a bunch of tumbling cubes. Uh, at least I think that's what this is called. What I do is I set my adjustable square to a quarter of an inch. This is a piece of three quarter inch stock. If I put that in the vise like this, I can run a line along that face. And run a line along that face. And those will be my depth stops. Then I take my, well, no, I can just do it like this. Mark this out as three quarters of an inch, three quarters of an inch, three quarters of an inch, three quarters of an inch. Three quarters of an inch, three quarters, three quarters. All right, now that we have that, what do we do? Well, we use those as uh, layout lines to um, cut into the bar uh, so that we'll leave a half inch square. Um, at the end, the end, at the beginning. Hmm. Anyway,
Right. Pull that out a little bit further. Good guess. Anyway, I'm going to continue cutting. basically cuts go that deep so I've got a one half inch square and quarter inch cube cuts now I'll heat it up all right so what I've got in here is a piece of three quarter inch square that I've cut quarter inch deep notches on two faces and I've soaked it because it's nice and warm. Clean off that. Stick, stick it in the vise. Get my bending wrench set up and tight. And twist. Alright. That and what you get is the tumbling cubes because the twists get to follow the cuts and all of the twisting piles up where you made the stop cuts. 